the state against Kyle Rittenhouse. State appears, state appears by Tom Bigger. Good morning, Your Honor. Mr. Rittenhouse appears by Attorney Mark Richards. She is not present. Good morning, Good morning, Your Honor. Attorney Gibson appears on behalf of the Fight Back Foundation and not the Proctor Organization. Good morning, Your Honor. I'm Tracy Keith Keller. Good morning, Your Honor. I'm Tracy Keith Keller. Good morning, Your Honor. Attorney Francine Felsky, on behalf of Peter B. King, attorney at law, on behalf of Crystal Capital, as a claimant for the bail. Now, I heard some pro hoc vici discussion. Are you licensed here? I am. Okay. Here today, let's start with the motion with respect to articles alleged to have been withheld from the defendant by the district attorney. What's up? Your Honor, it's my understanding that the defendant has received all of the property that he was seeking. The only remaining issue is the firearm that was used by Mr. Rittenhouse on August 25, 2020. The parties, the defense, the state, and also Dominic Black, who purchased that firearm, have all signed off on a stipulation whereby the Kenosha Police Department and Joint Services will as well as the magazine and the scope. So that will be a weapon that will be destroyed. It will not be in anyone's possession. Mr. Richards has the signed stipulation for the court to approve, and I believe that will take care of this entire issue and that motion. Is that correct? The other property has been returned as of Wednesday, I believe it was this week, and I've discussed this with my client, and it meets his goals, and we're in agreement. All right. Anything else? Not on that issue. I don't think so. You're going to provide us proof of destruction? Yes. The destruction will be recorded, and we'll provide that to the defense at that time. My understanding is that Joint Services delivers the – they gather a number of firearms at a time. They're delivered to the state crime lab. The state crime lab has the machinery to destroy them. That will happen probably towards the end of April, and then when that's done, it will be recorded, and we'll provide that to the defense for them as well. Okay. Yes. All right. Anything else with the state? I don't think there's anything else that I have to be here for, Your Honor, so I'd like to be excused if that's okay. Your question is my command. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Now we have the issue respecting the bond, which had been posted on behalf of the defendant, and apparently it looks like there's a stipulation which has been reached between the Rittenhouses and the Fight Back Foundation, and there's one other claim that's lingering here, and that is? It's the claim on the patent and trademark hedge fund on behalf of Karish Capital, who was a loaner of some of the money as well as holds a security interest in all the assets of John Pierce. Mr. Richards? As this attorney, because it's signed by Mr. King, filed with the court paperwork moving Mr. Resnick in Pro Hoc Vici. She's appearing here. Mr. Resnick's not submitted any paper to me. Mr. Resnick is the individual who filed the paperwork, and if he's not admitted Pro Hoc Vici, I would ask that the paperwork be stricken and that the stipulation between the parties go forward, not even addressing the questionable merits, to say the least, of the claim. The documents that have been filed with the complaint predate the events in Rittenhouse. They're signed on February 25th and 26th of 2020. The shooting, which is the subject of all these events, happened, as the court's well aware, August 25th of 2020. They talk about being out approximately $3.5 million with costs from an arrangement between the funding and Mr. Pierce to fund Carter Page and some other individuals' lawsuits. Nothing to do with this. They're out $3.5 million, 
And then according to paragraph 16 and 17, they then loan another $300,000. There are no documents whatsoever reflecting that. In our pleadings and in Fight Back's pleadings, it shows that all of the monies came from Fight Back to Mr. Pierce's trust account. He has said he has no interest in any of the monies. It was not his money. And maybe things are different in California or New York, but I don't believe any lawsuit can validly move against an attorney's IOLTA trust account. It's not their money. It wasn't Mr. Pierce's money. And as I said, as to paragraph 16 and 17, in their documents talking about a loan of $300,000, there is absolutely no documentation. So we're supposed to believe that they're out $3.7 million and then they'll just give another $300,000 with no paperwork, surety, or anything else signed by anyone involved in this case. Nowhere is fight back named, nowhere are the written houses named in this matter. And it's not timely filed. This has been going on now since November when we filed our paperwork, fight back filed their paperwork, and I believe yesterday or the day before, finally, Mr. Resnick and Mr. King um, filed this document asking to get involved a day late and a couple of hundred thousand dollars short. Um, Mr. Did you have a comment? Just, uh, just on top of what Attorney Richards indicated, that the money that was posted um, by Mr. Pierce, that money came from the Fight Back Foundation, which was transferred to Mr. Pierce's uh, trust account. Um, other than that, I concur with Attorney Richards, and I do ask the court to uh, approve the, the stipulation. Um, did you want to respond? Um, yes, Your Honor. I um, don't. I, I mean, I don't have the the receipt that uh, Mr. The remittance receipt that uh, Attorney Pierce has in his uh, possession or has uh, provided to the federal court in uh, Texas for the interpleader case. Uh, it, there is mentioned in the documents of an interpleader case in the federal court which is was filed uh, November 9th 2020 uh, and includes the fight back foundation uh, as a uh, defendant uh, asking that the court in Texas uh, Northern District of Texas make decisions about the uh, this money. Your Honor, that matter was filed, a copy of that, I believe it was by my office, with this court. Also, Mr. Solis had it, and that had the proof that the money was wired from Fight Back to Mr. Pierce's trust, $2 million, not $1.7 million, from Fight Back to Pierce's trust. Nowhere is there any mention of $300,000 coming from the hedge fund or the successor Carish Capital. So they're coming in, they have absolutely no documents, no proof of standing, nothing un except an unadopted unauthenticated acceptance of judgment that was signed in New York on February 18th of 2020, once again, before the Rittenhouse matter even occurred in August 25th of 2020. So where's the proof of this $300,000 $300, that supposedly came into this $2 million? Well, I can tell you that the clerk here, Mrs. Lima, who runs this operation, um, has spent a lot of time on the phone and internet, phone, right? Phone and internet with um, California 
and uh, they've been asking her a lot of questions that uh, are some of which she's had to decline to answer because she's not permitted to. But uh, she has told them that she can't accept filings. First, they tried to file things by email, which they can't do. And then they, um, they there were some things came in over um, in the proper filing system, but they're uh, not filed by attorney. It is uh, the uh, the claimant here is uh, it says it's a well. I'm not entirely clear. It says uh, it's an LLC. In the state of Wisconsin, a corporation must appear by an attorney. So there was no attorney filing these papers. Uh, then in addition, um, I looked at the affidavit that was filed by Ariel Johnson. Uh, which is, uh, well, I don't know what's going on here. Some of it appears to be out of sequence. Look at uh, page 12, line 23. I don't know what that is. But uh, and, and, and it's, there's misspellings and, um, and the like, so it looks kind of haphazard. But the the critical thing that struck me was um, page five, starting with line 15. After the events that arose in Kenosha, Wisconsin in November 19, or excuse me, 2020, which is also inaccurate, uh, gave rise to the arrest of Kyle Johnson a determined, a determined in her capacity as CRO of Pierce and PB that investing in Kyle's bail fund would be a good investment for the trust because she and the trust believed Kyle would in fact eventually be acquitted. That's quite a leap of faith. Um, in any criminal prosecution, uh, whether it's the Rittenhouse case where there certainly were suggestions before the trial that it was going to end up as an acquittal, but um, um, but um, that would be quite a leap of faith and to put $2 million on. And then it says, a good investment, accordingly, the trust contributed 300000 of its own funds towards Kyle $2 million bail fund, expecting to receive back its original investment plus interest at the legal rate. Um, who was going to pay the interest? We weren't. This is bizarre. Um, so I don't know. Um, Your Honor, I believe uh, that to, to respond to the question of these matters having occurred prior to the Kyle Rittenhouse case. Uh, the UCC filing statements, the lien, the merchant agreement, these were all um, uh, sources of the lien that the fund and their and Carish Capital thereafter had on Mr. Pierce's uh, or Attorney Pierce's uh, law firm assets. Um, and I don't think it matters whether or not it occurred before. Well, is a trust account a, uh, an asset of a law firm? But this issue was litigated, a similar issue was litigated uh, in the, the case of the Archdiocese of Milwaukee with the, when the, um, when the uh, claimants tried to get at the funeral fund, the uh, right. cemetery fund. Sure. That's separate money. Yeah. I... That wasn't Mr. Separate Money. That wasn't uh, uh, the attorneys to pledge. And he, in fact, pledged it, uh, according to what uh, I've got before me, uh, as money uh, in trust for the benefit 
of the defendant. And uh, take a look at 757.34. It's illegal for a lawyer to post bond on behalf of a client. I, my uh, issue here is that I am not privy to the uh, documents, uh, in particular the remittance uh, receipt. Uh, and the uh, statute is clear that the bond or the, the bail bond would be returned to the person or persons that um, uh, posted it. Um, the person to whom it is entitled to. Correct. The, the person who paid the money. Um, and I don't have the imp that receipt to be able to say one way or another uh, that Mr. Uh, Pierce did posted it personally or on a trust fund. That was filed. It's in the court. Yeah. And if they, if Karish or the other entity wished to get involved in this. They could have joined in the interpleader action, which Mr. Pierce filed in Texas, of saying he didn't have any interest in this. The money's posted from Pierce's trust account to Kenosha County. When it's returned, Mr. Pierce has said, it's not mine, I have no interest. It should go to fight back Kyle Rittenhouse. If the money comes back, it does not somehow then turn into non-trust fund money. So they have no interest in it. They don't have the pleadings to support any interest in it. The fact that she doesn't have the paperwork, where's Mr. Resnick? Why isn't he on the phone emailing proof of some debt owed or some promise made which doesn't exist? If I may, Your Honor, um, I'm not privy to the stipulation uh, that was made between uh, or amongst this. Who was the stipulation made between Mr. Richards? You're not a party. I, I just want to. Between fight back, as has been stated, Kyle Rittenhouse. But not the state. The state has no interest in the bond. Well, the st I'm not here to. I've got the, I found the bond receipt. I'm just looking for the, uh, the in the system. I've seen it at some point. Did, was that in your materials, the receipt? No, no. The two million, yeah. But is there an actual photo of it or an image? I swear to Pete, I saw one. The remittance receipt is available and was filed in the uh, Northern District of Texas. And we filed a copy of the interpleader action with our documents, which is the Northern District of Texas. Your Honor, my counsel from Florida is watching on television and he's going to text me the document. Associate says that the wire transfer receipt, receipt is e file document 441. I, I think 441. I don't think that's the one I'm talking about there. I, I don't know. I can't. Uh, 
locate it now, but uh, I've been looking through this over the last few days. And uh, I believe there was a rec an actual receipt issue. Signature of maybe maybe I'm wrong about it. The signature of uh, Your Honor, I, I believe the interpleader uh, complaint has the remittance receipt attached, and it is. Document 442. No, that's not what I'm looking for. I also have the copy. Copy of John Pierce be given a receipt for two million dollars. At 1.53 p.m. on November 20th, that lists a mandatory court date. Was the date you found it? That I don't have off the. Would have been shortly after the acquittal. I find that date or the following day. When the motions were filed? I think they were the next day. Let me double check. My associate says they were filed on November 19th. that again to the other council if they uh, want to see it and then bring it up here and do you know anything about increasing the size of the image? Are you talking about me? <laughs> On the phone. I, uh, I, I, my associate said she uh, could email it to the court and then you'd have a good copy of it. That would be great. Okay. Well, email it to Mrs. Lima. Okay. <clears throat> Do you have the receipt? Is there another receipt on there? Uh, the one that changed? Uh, what I'm looking for, there is a document which I recollect with the signature of uh, Mr. Pierce, <coughs> which also... The lawyer transfer one. You're looking for the one that the court gave to Mr. Pierce when he posted it. Oh, yeah, 
it's the document that has, actually has the word uh, for the benefit of. I know what document he's talking about. Mm -hmm. Yeah, at the bottom it says for the benefit of Kyle Rittenhouse's boss. Yeah, yeah that's the paper Oops. I'm talking about. Um, let me grab it. Well, I'm glad that you verify that there is such a document. I thought maybe it's in my head, but uh, it I, might, I definitely saw it. It might have been the... Wire transfer, to John Pierce. Yeah. And then at the bottom of the side for... And that's document 441. She's looking at it right now. Does it say for the benefit of... It says for the benefit of Kyle Rittenhouse? Right. For benefit of Wendy Rittenhouse as legal guardian for Kyle Rittenhouse. Yeah, that's it. That's the document. Yep, that one. Yep. Yeah, it says for the benefit of. That's a trust. <laughs> uh, every indication here is for trust. Um, the, 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 if, if you want to pursue this matter, then I'll have to have this. Oh, is that where it is? Yeah. Uh, I thought it was handwritten, too. But anyway, um, uh, I, I, you know, if, if I thought this were a close issue, because I don't, uh, I would have to invite um, Muriel Johnson here to be examined about the statement about earning interest of a criminal bond. Uh, I'm sorry, Your Honor. Earning, uh, she uh, stating that the she felt that the investment in the uh, investing in a criminal bond would be a good investment for a hedge fund. Uh, I understand they take some risks, but um, uh, that would uh, that would be something I would hear want to hear testimony on. Not only that she felt that she w it was a good risk, and she was confident of the outcome of, criminal, of a criminal case when there are seven counts, uh, and of course that the defendant won't flee, uh, which is always an issue in every criminal case, or get arrested for some minor crime, which under Wisconsin law justifies forfeiture of the bond, or um, and thinking that it's going to draw interest from the court, uh, I would want to examine about that. Uh, Your Honor, well, I don't think it's a close case, so I'm not going to go down that road. I, I, I actually think that the issue here is um, the return of the deposit should be returned to the person who made the deposit, their heirs or assigns. Well, first off, the lawyer can't lawfully post a bond. For uh, a to the extent that he did post the bond, well, and was and was attorney of record. Uh huh. Your whole theory is that he posted the bond, no? He, correct. He did post the bond. Personally. Yeah. That's not what it says. The receipt was made out to him at his home address, and if it was not appropriate for him to post the bond, then he was the attorney and attorney of record, so he did it. If you want a hearing, we'll have a hearing, but this this uh, uh, person who made this declaration and submitted it to the court is going to have to appear here to, uh, for examination. That's fine, Your Honor. Your, Your Honor, they haven't made even a preliminary showing. None of the documents that she filed, well, she didn't file because it was filed by Mr. Resnick through Attorney King, who's not here. None of those have been adopted or verified or authenticated and made legal here in the state of Wisconsin. Well, we're on, we're not on, we don't have to have verified pleadings in this state. It should, it, Your Honor, they haven't even shown the receipt or some agreement between Mr. Pierce, which he couldn't legally sign. He couldn't give away interest, or IOLTA monies and an interest in them. The money came from Fight Back through John Pierce's trust account to the Kenosha County bond. Mr. Pierce has now washed his hand of it. I don't have an interest. He's telling the truth. I have no interest, no ability to have an interest in a bond. Give it to the two people who are there, Fight Back, Rittenhouse, and Mr. Schroeder. 
with all due respect, he has said, I don't have an interest in the bond. I'm going to file a complaint, an uh, interpleader complaint uh, in the federal court of Texas because there's a bunch of people who think they have it, include not just Fight Back, but um, my little fund, which I'm not familiar with. So Mr. Pierce hasn't said that he it should be given to these two. It, he said it should be decided by the federal court. It, they haven't joined the interpleader, which they're admitting they're aware of. Not yet. We haven't responded. Well, you're not yet. Yeah, you don't have any standing here today. It, the, uh, the time for answer well, has not come. There is no answer. It's a criminal case. To the interpleader action. There isn't an action. There has been no action filed in this county. No, to in the interpleader. There is no. To the interpleader, I'm not sorry, I don't know the action. I'm talking about the actions here under the jurisdiction of this court today. Um, There's this document filed, motion of assignee of judgment creditor, um, Parish Capital LLC, for turnover pursuant to section 1.11 in an agreement. Uh, is this a is this a uh, an application to the court for an order? Is by motion. Is this a motion that's recognized in Wisconsin? I just don't think I, you know, a request is being made for this hedge fund to uh, intervene in an action in which it has not, uh, has no legal standing in Wisconsin, filed by an attorney who does not indicate any uh, that he's licensed in the state of Wisconsin. And it hasn't had your signature on it, so it doesn't have any sponsorship by any licensed attorney in this state. So I'm going to uh, I'm going to uh, order that the bond be distributed in accordance with the stipulation which has been agreed to by the other parties. Anything else? No. Well, thank, thank you. you.